Okay. Good morning, everyone. We're going to call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors workshop meeting for Saturday, May 25th, 2024 to order. Time is now 9 01 a.m. First item is the Pledge of Allegiance. So I'd like to ask everyone to rise. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. To the Republic of the States, one nation under God, indivisible, for the justice and justice. The meeting as always are being recorded for all your video. Everyone, myself included, uh, you can phone so we can vibrate. Uh, we really do not disturb the meeting. Anyone who would be to use them, there are masks and sanitizer in front of the room. And uh, we ask that if you are going to make a public comment, that you not only sign it on the sheet, but when you vote on the podium, you should literally state your name and address for the record. So at this point, I'll open up for two public comments. Um, I do know we had a number of the presidents of Stonecroft sign in, but they're going to defer their comments to when we get to the, that section of the meeting. Yeah. Uh, are there any other public comments? Yep. Uh, yeah. Beverly Lossman, for Water Street, Salzburg. Uh, I'm a member of the NCT. Committee, and I have two questions. First of all, does anyone know where the um, helps are? I do not see it upstairs. Offhand, no, you got the one. Okay. Second question is uh, Did it destroy the box copy? Thanks for the. They call it uh, stick box? Yeah. Um, I, I saw the sticks, but I did not see the boxes. I don't know that in the past six years I've ever seen boxes. Okay. So, oh, okay. I don't know if they exist anymore. Okay. Um, I'll take a look around the building, but like I was just through here the other day and I, I didn't see them anymore. Chances are they've been gone for what happened. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Seeing no other public comments, we we'll move into the main items uh, for the meeting. First is we have several announcements. Wait, 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 wait. Well, that's uh, oh, three okay. items. So we're not. There's some, uh, uh, no. So it looks like there's four. It's Beverly and three gentlemen. Oh, there's five. Yep. Uh, no, okay, so it's five. I just counted. There's four inside that. Uh, I think Dan started to sign. No, it is three. Dan signed in twice. Okay. Yeah. Just make sure no, no, no. You're good. No, no, no. Dan started to sign in twice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you, you started signing it and then you started talking to me and then you went down a couple of lines and then you signed the whole way. And then I uh, a lot. You have a lot to say. <laughs> okay. So, uh, first up, announcement is to get the septic systems pumped. Uh, we do have the list of registered pumpers available on requests. Uh, letters have to one out. Um, and then I care is tracking who has and who hasn't done it. So thank you. Um, next, we are going to be setting up an educational meeting about septic care at the Marion Township building. That's one of the items on the agenda we have for today. And we are still accepting letters of support for the proposed sewer project that the BEP is required. Um, the uh, residents of Stonecroft, specifically Dan, has provided an updated form letter that has very nice additions. So if you have a chance to read it, I read it. Interested. Yep. Thank you. Um, I think that's fantastic. So thank you for putting that together. We appreciate every ounce of support that we can get on trying to navigate this kind of messed up situation. I mean, we'll get it fractured up and shake it your door and have to stay and sure to put on and do whatever those sheets do. So, Thank you. Okay, item number one. All right, David, we're going to yes. want for public comment. Uh, that gentleman, he's not listed on the oh, agenda, okay. so this might be the time. So let's let's carve out some time. That way, if you want to say you can, or if you want to leave again, this uh, gentleman is here for the uh, for 62 Main Street to be used as apartments. Uh, I was talking to him a little bit before the meeting. Uh, this is something that the board can't unilaterally match. This is something that uh, our, our stuff is, yeah, it's, 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 specifically it's a zoning issue, but municipal stuff is set up in such a way that we will move a lot of the opinion and potential bias from various things, such as codes enforcement, zoning, 
um, stuff like that. You can't have a, a situation where court is either going to be uh, unilaterally in favor of something that's it was against the grain of the, the larger plan, or you know, kind of the opposite of that. Uh, so what it runs down to is, uh, I would I would highly encourage. Um, you already talked to Kraft, but maybe talk to an engineer independently that can take a look at our zoning, give you kind of their their opinion of the way town center is worded. Um, I did highlight to him that town center consists of low density residential, like commercial, a lot of things, but there are provisions in there for uh, multi unit or multi family blocks. The real question is is there anything in our zoning that you would need a, a variance for? based on what he's trying to do. Because the simple answer might be no, actually. If you engineer look at it, you put it in a zoning permit, um, or there might be something you know, like you were saying about with that, that frontage. If there's one arbitrary number in there that's that's holding you up and everything else is okay, that's a very very request. Um, I'm not going to say that, like, yes, you will get this, but if it's a, hey, I meet seven out of the eight check boxes, I don't think the zoning area committee is going to going to turn that one away because that's still functionally in line with what the spirit of the zoning is. Um, Any questions? Anything this absolutely intended twice? So I, I would be curious to know what the other two times what the result was because uh, and just going going down the the avenue of what we were what we're going to be talking about in just a second. You may not have a sufficient septic system. At the property to support that number of people. That might have been what the city is. If it is that, is it the single family? Theoretically, yeah. Yeah, it's it's zoned already for single family. So it's a it's a single family dwelling in a in a city residential zone. So there's sixty two Main Street is a it was a I thought that was so good. So you guys are give me a minute one second. See the patterns. Yeah. No, you're you're not set up. You're not you're not commercial. You're not set up. You're not set up. Provides for light commercial and low density residential. So, like I said, the only the only limiting factor would be is if you violated something in zoning in terms of size or square footage or you know something like that, or if you had a septic system there that was designed and is able to support, let's say, four people rather than a potential eight person as. Um, so that would be, like I said, I highly recommend you talk to like an engineer or somebody who's going to be able to review the zoning for you. That's that's not me. I'm not an expert in this. Um, and then if, it's, if there is a request that you have to make, it's probably going to be a very simple one simply because the zoning does support a very similar use. What is the time frame the process? Um, it varies, honestly. I, I can't give you a good, good ballpark on that, but we usually, and this would be more of a suit question, I think when you put the zoning area requests in, I think it's usually within about a month. Like they, they put the, the schedule request out and they just put something the following month. But we also had... Yeah. Where, where it's been delayed, delayed, delayed. Yeah. so it could be you know, it could be seven months. We have we have control, control over it. it. You know, um, the bottom line is the sooner you put in a request or something like that, the sooner it gets done. But um, I can't really say like yes, it'll be done by July. It's done completely outside yeah. of our ability to give you that that kind of expectation. But just from the zoning aspect of it. You're probably in, you're definitely in good space to be able to use it as a single dwelling rather than, and there's a, a good likelihood that you would be able to go after the, like for the, the duplex like the split that you were talking about based on what the zoning is already. But it has, but it has to, go, to go through the process. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That that is something what about the fees? Um, I so, have to, yeah, no, we should have a show yeah. come up to the podium. Yeah. 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 If you could just come up to the yeah. podium, please state your name and address. Yeah. I apologize just for record keeping sake. Stephen Schultz, 82 Forest Road, one until. Okay. 
Um, as far as fees, there can be a lot of fees associated with that. Again, yeah, yeah, there, that's something you're going to have to speak to, I think, both the craft and. Um, I think we have, have, we have the office. Yeah, that but for planning and development, there's certain amount of fees. You know, <laughs> Yeah, yeah it's, 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 there, I know there's supposed to be for what the actors are carrying. Yeah. But um they're not unfundable. Yeah. Uh if you leave an email address with us, we can we can hunt them down some day. Yeah. But I think that again is more just to get a feel for where yeah. and I as a personal standpoint, I'd rather have something there that had an empty, empty building. I agree with that. And we just want to make sure, like I, I use the extreme examples. There's a difference between a, a, a duplex apartment and a six floor condominium. One of them is very similar to the the just use, and one of them is not. So you're you're not really flying in the face of what's already kind of been done. You're just asking for a little bit of wiggle on what the rules are. So. <laughs> Or uh, the email. Uh, here, uh, you're going to just write your, write your email down for me, and I'll make sure that uh, we can send out and find out for you. Feel free to call up the office if you have questions or what the next step is. We'll help you out as much as we can. We like to see um, things developed in town. Yeah. Yeah. Like plus for us, yeah. um, we want to see people you know stay here, living here, etc. But you know there are. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is at 537. Uh, we did receive the note from the DEP that the special study was accepted. So fantastic there. Um, the comments that they supplied is the project will require a lower quality management permit for the construction and operation of the your project whenever it goes in. And uh, we need the actual approval for the design. The design stage of that happens when we go for that, that water quality permit. Um, so the, the concept is approved, but there is no actual like, design. So that's going to be something entirely different. And then there's going to be the uh, Permits uh, that we may or may not need when construction actually happens, depending on how things go from a, a survey standpoint. On that same sort of vein of things, the local share account grant for 2023, this was for uh, some of the super design, was reported. This was $69,000 or $570 uh, for work completed and reimbursed between March 26, 2024, and July 30th, 2027. So that's starting as of this March that yes. yeah, if nothing retroactive, then nothing retroactive. So we have some okay. So um I have a stack of papers on the desk there, then I need to speak to you on how to get that completed at some point then. Yes. So um, the survey and that original grant we got last year. So the hundred five thousand we can begin reimbursing and Joe and I supply um, a report of all the spending for this for that. So in our um, this month's century sewer report, and we're going to continue giving you your report. So we're yeah. anticipating a couple more items coming through, so we want to be on top. Okay. So we can do the reimbursement request um, for the existing survey work, and then once the survey is finally completed for this round, that can be reimbursed requested too. Okay. So that grant will actually be released. Okay. We anticipate by the end of the year. So it'll be given to you guys, and then we'll be done with that grant and okay. And then once that one is done, we'll commence the design outcome under your direction. So once we complete the design, we have to consider a okay, graphic commits and that type of step. So the step has so I'll I'll give you all so I understand what to what people we have to pull in order to have this complete. I know you're going to be sending this stuff, it's just marking this year. Then the funds get transferred into our account and then we could reimburse ourselves. Yeah, that's exactly. That's awesome. Okay. That's fantastic. Thank you for all your work on getting yeah. the best of those grants. Yes. Oh my gosh. Thank you so, so much. Yeah. And I could, I guess I have that stuff. I could come up to you if you'd like it somewhere. 
um, or if you want to get whatever sounds. Yeah, I think that's really fun. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So, Mark, you want to say anything? Next is the sewer management program or sewage management program. C2C was out doing surveying at the beginning of May. Uh, this is around the adding on lot maintenance uh, and uh, where stuff is for the actual sewer project itself. Uh, we are looking to do a maintenance meeting for the on lot systems on June the 20th at 7 p.m. to the township building. Uh, we would need a motion to authorize that. My chair will be proposing a letter, which we need to get printed uh, to, and sent out to the residents around the details of the special meeting. So uh, we're going to need two motions about that. The first motion is going to be the, uh, authorizing the meeting to occur on Thursday, June 20th, 2024 at 7 p.m. in Township Building. I'll make a motion. Second. And then we'll call here. Aye. Irene? Aye. Okay. Yes. yes. Wait, you're in the middle of the motion, please. One second. Ask, ask the question. Yeah. Um, so, second motion is to uh, approve, print, and distribute the letters once I do care and completes them. Second. Aye. 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 Because it's inside. Wait, what? Because okay. the packets that were distributed. Oh, oh, oh. So, oh, your well is inside the house. Yeah, your well. Oh. Oh. The only way I can call is the packets. Okay. So I can't put it on the side. Okay. So, can one of you take a note of that so we can pass up the wall and get to the house? Okay. Thank okay. you. Just as an aside, I asked um, Kimberly to help us draft a simplified explanation of the sewer program for people for uh, clarification purposes. I, we're still getting a lot of backlash. I think there's a lot of misinformation that's still out there. Yeah. We understand that there is a uh, a new petition uh, that's being circulated around town. We support everyone to voice their opinion. We support everyone's position on this issue. We know it's a very difficult matter. Uh, but unfortunately, we are under uh, the gun, literally and figuratively, when it comes to compliance with CEP. So if there's anyone that's out there that's watching this, if we don't comply with this, uh, if any of the supervisors take action against it and it's voted in such a manner, we risk the, the penalty of going to jail. This is not just, oh, slap on hands, this is, this is contempt, and we can go to jail if we do not comply, and I'm not willing to go to jail. I took an oath of office to support the laws of the of the state of Pennsylvania to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and I will uphold those laws, whether or not I agree with some of the underlying um, matters. But we have to comply with this. So, if any of you are out there watching this video and have this petition, feel free to forward it on to the DEP. Um, we can support you in that matter, but there's really not much more that we can do. Um, this has now become very uh, hefty legal manner, whatever misinformation you've been given, um, we'll be more than happy to clarify it. Please call the office and speak to any one of us at this point. I'm just going to put that out there for everyone. I completely wholeheartedly agree yep. with that. We're in between a rock on this. Mm -hmm. Whether we like it or not, is irrelevant. We have to make sure that we're, we're not. Aside from the personal liability of this, yep. that we're not putting the entire township in, in jeopardy based on this. There's a time and place to try to challenge certain things, and we're we are not in one of those types of places right no. now. No, and, so. and the bottom line is, and the DEP has done this, they have come in and put the system in and said, here's the bill. Yep. No and brands. that's out. No brands, no nothing. Yep. They they've done that before. So yeah, we're Believe me when I say this, it's a matter of faith, I guess, but um, we are doing everything we can to make sure that this is a monumental train wreck. And that's that's the best thing I can offer you on that is we're trying to navigate the unfortunate situation that we are left in. And it may not be exactly the way that any one of us would particularly would like to see it ideally, or the way that people in the town would like to see it ideally, but it is it is the reality that we are in. If I may, yes. I, 
The special study being accepted by DEP, our final executive description was that Marion Township needs grants in order for the system to go in. So by being accepted without question, uh, having all of the permit listing was fantastic because that means they are completely on board what we have supplied. Yeah. So Marion Township, um, we put our best foot forward and said, hey, we're in this particular financial position. Our residents require this. So I think that is a huge leap of faith from actually DEP as well, acknowledging that we need that funding support. And then also, so far, all the survey we work is covered by grants. So the residents are not planning for it. The design is now covered by a grant. So the residents, you are not paying for the design. It is quite extraordinary. Mm -hmm. So the initial life work has been approved and paid for by the government entities. They recognize the situation to a certain degree. So we're going to continue fighting for construction grants or seeing how we can meet that threshold that DEP agreed to in the special study. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, anything else on that? Okay. Uh, the next is the proposed new building. Uh, Olson Design Studio presented a plan. Uh, we will be meeting with Senator Casey's, uh, I think Senator Casey and some of the, the staffers. User, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. Senator User, uh, on the uh, it's actually the 24. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be Congressman User's team. We are not certain the user himself will be able to attend. The team is eager to come in. It's we're definitely gonna have Madison. She's the head of staff, as far as I understand. She's been mm -hmm. calling and has great conversations and really cares about the township. And they want to see just in general where you are. They want to support the building. Maybe perhaps we can get them to the parks. They want to just generally understand how they can better support the township's needs, particularly to put their weight behind any letters we may need to write in the future to specific entities, which is just phenomenal. This is something we've been hoping for to finally um, be able to get them to commit is wonderful. So they'd like to come Monday, June 24th at 1 p.m. Very good question. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. and thank you again so much, Kimberly, for putting that together yeah. for us. Yeah, you could not be here and where we're at now if it wasn't for you. Um, just please ask us where it has been closed during the walk around park. Especially, yeah. Yeah, especially if it rains. So I am off that entire day, so I will be here and I will be available. So I will take off that entire day, so I will be here. Yeah. Um, Next portion of that is the uh, discretionary funding and COVID 19 ARPA grant applications. Uh, through Senator Casey, that's where I got that one mixed up, uh, have been submitted. So thank you for doing that. Uh, and we'll, we'll wait to see what responses we get on. Yes, the only update I have on that is their office just confirmed me that it is going to Congress. Okay. So it's going through the first round currently. I do not know, and I don't think we'll get updates past knowing that it was forwarded from Senator Casey's office. Perfect. So that is that is something we'll have to keep our fingers and our toes crossed for. Yeah. Because it's also subject to the income collection. Yeah. Um, obviously, Senator Casey is a particular political party that is outside of what we control and it's outside of any bias that we have. So if the election Flipped and the other party decides not to continue with any community funding for rural facilities, then that opportunity is, is gone. So that is the only problem to that. But we're in a good place right now. Yep. Thank you. Uh, next item we have is the future planning for Marion Township, the community based initiative. Um, that's going to be a persistent item on the agenda. Um, and a couple of Really short notes. I'm thinking that we should break this into three categories on a five to ten year plan. First one being unification, second one being efficiency, third one being capability. So pretty much anything that we can think of, I think, would fall into one of those three categories. Um, and that way we can start to divide things up in uh, orders of priority and feasibility, and then start to try to really act against the problem. But right now it's it's still sort of shooting to heaven. Um, whether it's banners or building, we can start to try to milestone that one on a five and ten year Yeah, and then again, just from public education. So the past couple of meetings, we've been uh, we've been talking about 
what what more can we do for for this community? Um, and so in previous years, we were just plugging holes, trying to solve problems, but now we feel comfortable enough that everything is on track and we want to start moving forward and having more initiative. And I, I guess I was really inspired by going to the PSAS conference. Unfortunately, uh, Chuck Gus with SD had left the group. I did meet with Mike, who, uh, Mike Bingham, who is our new engineer working with us. Nice young guy, again, very much on board with helping us. My better understanding also is if we have plans in place, then we could go out and reach for those grants. And that's, this is a heavy grant initiative type of thing. So along with doing the building, we want to do the park. Some of the bigger infrastructure things I think are speed tables out on this main strip here rather than speed bumps. Yeah. I know um, road crew is not fond of speed bumps. The speed tables are easier when it comes to plowing sidewalks and creating more of an atmosphere that you want to make the building and the community center a destination so that we have functions and have all different kinds of activities in this building to help support and really, again, as Peter was saying, like the beautification type of thing, you start small and, and it grows. We want to maintain the population that we have. We want to attract people living in Marion Township. Um, Kimberly had made a couple of suggestions last time I spoke to her. I thought this was just brilliant, and then credit all goes to Kimberly. Um, she said, uh, why don't we create a slideshow with some of the historical uh, items that we have upstairs? So I actually am going over to um, Conrad Reiser High School next week. I'm going to speak with one of the guidance counselors to see if we could get some high school students that are interested in helping us scan and catalog them and create the program essentially so we can start having a slideshow. When we have a new building, as Kimberly has suggested, we can have a dedicated screen to that slideshow and change it seasonally. So if there's particular items upstairs, and like I know there's Halloween masks up, or there's baseball items, etc. But what a brilliant, just simple idea. Fantastic. And this way it's on display for the public, both currently and, and in the future. Um, another uh, uh, idea that Kimberly had also was creating a committee to see what other things we could we need in our community. And again, I'm going to reach out to the high school to see if there's any students that are that would like to participate so we could create a community-based uh, committee um, and, and have, have people's inputs where they could meet regularly and, and we can understand what people's needs are. Because as, as Kimberly had mentioned uh, uh, during that discussion, what is there for our young people to do in this community? Small children, we have a park that's going to be a lovely place for them to go to. That really kind of fades up. I was 10, maybe 11 years old, I say at best, if they're not already hooked up to a cell phone or a computer. Um, but what are we doing for our teenage population? We're really not doing much, and even our young adults. So again, the concept is this community-based initiative. I'd like to start having concepts about having programs at the building so that we're attracting people to stay here and, and be happy living here. Another, another concept also is, um, I just recently a, a attended a training class myself. We are a medical poor area. There is no, there's no doctor's offices and a lot of doctor's offices don't have advanced capabilities. Our nearest hospitals are 25 minutes in each direction, you know, driving pretty fast, if you're getting that way. Um, I'll, I'll just throw out a statistic. Your uh, rate of survival, um, if you go down and you're having a heart attack and you code, your rate of survival currently out of a hospital is uh, a little over 10%. If you have someone that initiates CPR and if you have a defibrillator available. There are um, grants available for defibrillators, also known as AEDs, um, as well as other programs to get community trained on using AEDs and CPR. I've already spoken with John. Um, he said he may have someone at the fire department who's a CPR instructor who may be able to participate. Again, if we pull CPR classes every six months, maybe we could be different from that statistic. We get our community involved. We have an AED at the building, we get them trained up on it. But to have, to break that statistic, to say Marion Township stands out from all these other communities as far as survival rates free hospital when it comes to codes and CPR. These are the kinds of things that I want to see happen at this building now and in the future. Um, and if we create the program and we reach out for those grants, we're more likely to, to get them. And that's the goal for this community-based initiative. 
get the plans in place, reach out for those grants and start moving forward so that we, we generate and have a community that is very involved rather than how many people are in the audience, three, and maybe doesn't count. We have to have people in this audience right, that, that are here as a solution, but I want to see more community participation. I want to feel like a little community. I want to keep people here and I want them happy and I want them helpful. Yeah, so. Yeah, I think, honestly speaking, the building, the new building is kind of a niche panel of all yeah. that. That's being able to rent it out for weddings, being able to have local clubs or Boy Scouts use yep. it. That's everything you could think of, having a, a big old night or an indoor yard sale, whatever. All of those hinge on having a, a reasonable space to do it. And right now, we just don't. Right. And Jesse even mentions uh, in the past, home farmers market. How nice would it be to have stands set up? Where farmers to come every weekend you know, during the seasons and, and people come to their crafts, people could come with all kinds of things to sell in our community. We could come, you could have a nice walking path through town, you could come walk around the park and you could uh, help support your community. Yeah. Uh, downtown Reading does that for yep. certain times of the year. They yep. did pretty well on that. Yep. We have a lot of local farmers, we have Twilight Acres right yep. there. It could be a really nice thing, but again, you just we don't we have the space and right. to do it. We have to do this. I think we really and, and, and a lot of these things I know it, it's it's a uh, it's pipe dream, but we're looking at five, ten, even fifteen year day um to get things in place so that this happens. Yeah. That those are my goals. Come on to the podium. You're being come, on, come on up, David. Yeah. This would happen short. That's okay. Dan Clark, 14, Brooks, Torch, Strong, Pro Village. Having a big, beautiful building, having a big, wonderful park, having all of these nice facilities that the folks are talking about for great. But if our roads are in some poor condition now, okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm, out, I'm out for a second. So this was a criticism that somebody else lodged. We're also going to look for road grants, but this yeah. this is going to be pretty much solely financed by grants. It's the only way that we're going to be able to do it. And to clarify, road funding is completely separate from any other funding. Yeah. We rely on, on turnback allocation and liquid fuels money in order to do the roads. So, so this is completely based off of grants, and we're going to solicit private donations too. So, so that's, that's the biggest part of it. Roads is a whole other habit. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. That's why I say all things are wonderful. Right. Yeah. Oh. You know, can't run to it. Right. Agree, agree. Right. And, right. and I'll, I'll say one record that if I could do all 34 miles of road that we have, if we had the budget to do it, I would do it in a heartbeat. But the problem is, so many of our roads are in such bad shape that it's more than a half a million dollars per mile. And our rents. Basically, seven eighths of our operating budget for the entire township for the year to one mile. So we have to we have to be careful and uh, very very prescriptive on which things get the attention yeah. per year, and then we have to chase every grant opportunity that we can. Yeah. Unfortunately, every municipality in the state of Pennsylvania is in similar straits. And so yeah. It, also, speaking with Mike from SDE. He was telling us there's a slightly newer product that's available for paving that has that gives roads a little bit more. You know, maybe he's like you may, you may be able to eke out about three to five more years with this newer product, which is which is promising to parents. Um, unfortunately, with the events that the bridge collapse in Baltimore, there may be more infrastructure grants available. But because we usually don't meet requirements, which we don't have multiple highways. bridges and highways. A lot of those funds are, are not available. Just but trust me. Now, with Kimberly on our, our, our corner pocket here, with SE, we are constantly looking for money, money because we're in such bad shape. Again, this plugging hole situation, we have been left with so many problems. The only thing that I think made it better in an exchange kind of way, um, COVID put the brakes on everything. COVID absolutely put the brakes on everything. We're able to accumulate some funds in our bank account because we weren't able to do things. And so that's why you see some of the products. And I think, Culver's. yeah, there's some, yeah, the culverts. What I'd like to do for this is like have a banner out there uh, as to where we are with products, the key for culvert projects, so that people can walk and say, this is what's getting done this year. You know, if it's something that's just something like, let's see, culverts here, and just, you know, picking up something so that people understand. A, a lot of 
a lot of what people don't understand, just like when you build a house, you put your money into your pipes, you put your money into your electrical, you put your money into your support structures. That's all covered up by the drywall. But those are things that are the most important helping support the house. The paint, the carpet, the furniture, those are the pretty things that make it look nice. But we need to have that underlying uh, support in place in order for us to move forward with everything. So, great, go ahead. Yes. Oh, just a quick question on AED grants. Mm -hmm. uh, we the Stone Crawl Village in our community building has put an AED in. Could we qualify for a grant? At least we have to, every couple of years, we have to place batteries and, and stuff. So, no, but probably not because you're not an artificial profit and you're not yet. You can probably solicit donations. So, if you wanted to reach out to um, one of the local hospitals, you might want to stop and say, hey, this is what we're doing in this community. Is well, so, the HOA not a problem? I have no idea. Yeah. 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 One of the issues is usually the grants are for the initial equipment. It's not for maintenance. Yeah. 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 So yeah, we'll have some more discussion on that with Jesse here, but I think we're all kind of in the yeah. right line that we just need to make sure the message yeah. goes out to the community correctly. Yeah. Because yes, it's it yes, it's a lot of money for a building, but we're not looking to organically finance that. That's not coming out of our our our, our budget. We're looking to get grants to, to be able I to fully understand yeah. 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 Right. Here's here's the reality. This building is falling apart. And I think Dan is playing double that. No, 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 absolutely, absolutely. And every year we have an inspection from our insurer, and every year that insurer is finding more and more problems. Yeah. Eventually, we're going to have to abandon ship. And so, literally, the writing is on the wall. We have to do something about this. Otherwise, we're not going to have an office. So, right in the wall, is falling apart. Well, it's in the Yes, it's in the stacks. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
things that need to be in zoning versus things that need to be in ordinance. I don't think we have any changes that are needed for that. It's going to be at the uh, joint planning commission meeting the other night. Um, so once we adopt the short term, uh, his suggestion was to do that and then yep. work on that. So uh, whether we propose uh, the advertisement on Thursday night or we wait till the following month, we just want to make sure the dust is settled. Um, there was a little discussion at the, the Joint Planning Commission around like Airbnb, Verbo, that okay. type of short term rental. Um, so uh, they're going to be circulating some ordinances and zoning stuff that exists for other uh, missions and municipalities. Um, some of the other members had that thought that they were sort of waiting to see on it. My stance on that is we see it on the horizon. Yeah. Let's do something about it now before we have a huge cropping of these things. Um, and then you have pre existing use. So there's going to be more discussion on yeah. that. The next yeah. uh, joint end commission meeting is the 18th at 7 p.m. Uh, I made Jesse aware of it and then I'll send you guys a make sure you have it on your calendar. I'm sure the uh, secretary for that will send something over to uh, July, uh, July, July 18th at 7 p.m. Uh, next, uh, 4050 Conrad Weiser Parkway. Um, on no, I was out of town, so I haven't been. I didn't pull over craft to um, make an appointment to go on over there so we can find out. Okay. Yep. Uh, next is the Buster Birch Joint Zoning. This is around section 403. Uh, as I mentioned, the next meeting is the July 18th, 7 uh, p.m. Uh, this is going to be the uh, essentially the hearing for the accepting, uh, acceptance of those amendments for Mary Township and Joint Zoning. Um, it is a, an open public meeting, just like all of our, but uh, Jesse and I will be, be in attendance as a, as a bare minimum for voting purposes, but I ran a period to attend on the 18th as well. Uh, and you said that's July. Yes, July. Oh, my that's at 7 it's, it's always good to have the three of us there just in case somebody gets yeah. out of traffic or gets sick or whatever the situation is that way we have lost. <laughs> Oh, no, no, you guys don't have to be there until last. They have their own reporter. Yeah, so you don't have to. There's a rare exception you guys have to be different, meaning sometimes there's like there's things that are required, but not in this, this yeah. case. You don't have to be there because because it would be technically a public hearing. There's a stenographer and this also taking up. That's it, Rob Sonia, right? Uh, yeah. Rob Sonia? Or had a pedal right over. Yeah, it's over. It's like you know where the like, wedding theatrics is and like Randler's like landscaping. Yeah, it's like right behind them. Okay, as we get closer to it, yeah, I'll show you this. If I'm the real. Okay. Uh, next is the property maintenance issue for 660 Canal Road. This is that building that's owned by AT and T. Uh, Glenn from Kraft was going to go take a look at it on the 16th. Um, and then I think that really the next step is we got to start filing stuff. Yeah, the courts yep. around that because AT and T is being more. Yep, and Colin sent out numerous letters. So. Uh, next is the Stonecroft Pond for fire suppression. Uh, we have three residents of Stonecroft here. Um, the only update that I had noted for this, other than talking to Jesse, was the fire chief was out to test the dry irons and filters, and there was a whole bunch of algae and oh, maybe catfish. So there were yeah. some things that got sucked into. The yeah. Did you guys send it from fish fry? Yeah, I was going to say, cover that. Oh, uh, uh, so, um, so, so I, I, I will go on record saying that in its current state, I don't think it's going to be able to satisfy the, the requirements for if they can try to close down any sort of bottle. It, it simply won't do it. Um, aside from that, Jesse did contact, I believe it was the Department of Fish and Game and like yeah. the PA voting and stuff like yeah. that, where we are limited by what we can do jurisdictionally based on plans and approved uh, items around the construction or maintenance of said bond. Uh, and there's certain times that we can go and enforce, like they go to, to do bond deduction, they have to have certain things inspected. If it doesn't meet our uh, criteria for inspection, we don't release the funds. So there's, there's a kind of control there. However, those other Pennsylvania commissions don't have those restrictions. If it doesn't meet certain criteria for out of the bond or the waterway, 
the fish game here should maybe be able to take action. Or because it's something where you would be recreationally putting a boat in there, there may be rules that are, are being violated based on PA voting. Um, Jeff, the unfortunate is not here. He had most of that information because he had the first hand conversations, but we are reviewing other avenues of ways that we can help you guys that aren't directly with the board here at the end. So probably more to the point on Thursday night, we'll get more details since Jesse will be here and be able to talk to it. But um, right now there's, until they try to do an inspection or bond reduction, but there's really not much that we can push on. Um, you can affirm she can take one up there. Okay, the yeah. on 14 votes push for John Brock Village. Uh, we had a environmental uh, management company come up to the bond on Thursday and take a look at it. Uh, his first comment was, your pond is leaking water rapidly. I suggest, and I have it in an email, uh, I suggest that you get an engineer there, ASAP, to find out what water is leaking out of the pond. I sent pictures to the township here. I don't know. A few folks I don't see had that. not had that. I didn't see it. I saw the captain one, but I didn't see yeah, it. You saw the captain. Yeah. There's pictures being in. Okay. I didn't I just didn't get a chance to see it. Yeah, but I'd like to just see yeah. more of the day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. oh my. You can see the water will how quickly it is dry. Yeah. This is not evaporation. No. If evaporation were to occur, you would have a dry soil and a water lot. You are having dry soil, inches of moisture, and then a water lot. So the water is leaking out of the pond. Yeah. Okay. This is very pretty. Does anyone go out to the business? That's not that it goes into the broken line. Yes. I can walk across that. That's curly leaf uh, on ropes. It grows from a ball down the bottom of the sediment in the pond. That's how thick it is. There's no way you're going to draw. Not more no, from that on no. to use it as it's a fire no. fire practice. Now we'll we'll get our engineer to take a look at it too. Any anything that we can do to push on them, we, we will. Specifically in the current state, the pond will not be able to satisfy the fire suppression requirements that are your your designs to plan. I, I don't see how any yeah. there's there's yeah. any way that they can easily do that. The gentleman uh, inspected Oh, I don't know the inspection. Stated the following. That. That's something else I'm talking about. Dan, do you have a copy of that letter inspection? Yeah, I do. We'll, we'll make sure that Mike has your phone number yeah. so, you know, so he can reach out to you. How far would it change? Anyway, he says that uh, in order to treat the pond, to start to treat the pond, he couldn't treat it all at one time. That he would have to do it in sections slowly. It requires a permit. Would be about sixteen hundred dollars this year to start, yeah. and approximately thirty-two hundred dollars next year to finish the project. Sold back on to landmark. Yeah, yeah. it's going. Yeah. Landmark comes in. Uh, yeah. We did not. Yeah. It's not meant to pay to us. So th those are his recommendations. It's aquatic environmental environment consultancy for the name of the company. So we, we need to check with Colin. Just, just as a, a question for these guys, because I think there is a provision in there, and it's the same thing that happened with the open spaces that you guys have, where they, they quietly provision stuff. 
Judge, judge. When it, yeah, it, that, that's what I mean. Like they're in your agreement, homeowners agreement, and everything else. That's, that's allowed. And my concern is that they might try and fast on on that. Um, you need to talk to Colin to see if there's anything that would prevent them from doing that until it is satisfied by all inspection criteria. Because the last thing I want to see them do is just say, yeah, we're going to walk away from the bond money. And then, but they do. They 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 might. Might. Um, it's okay. Yeah. 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 But that's, that's, I want to make sure that there's not anything weird working that might impact you guys in college. I, I did present to you two months ago the items on our punch list yes. of various things that we felt are yeah. still on the dress. Yeah. One of the things on there was like, we'll be on the like, field. Yeah. I don't think they ever closed their energy yes to it out because they withdrew it. So there's still, like, that's still a thing that they tried and backed away from it at the last minute. I mean, thanks for document and request in field percolation projects on concentrated uh, fire suppression system. These are items that are on the punch list that have been addressed. We have no communication with Stone or the landmark. They don't respond to anything. We have our community building. Brooks, Kirby. Yeah. Yeah. At every opportunity, we'll do whatever we can to help you guys with that or whether any one or all of those things that you have on the list. Yeah. A couple of items that Dan mentioned for a little bit of the people to do power beach. Uh, one, the muskrat problem is they allegedly had somebody come out and remediate the muskrats. It's muskrat problem. Yeah. It's, it's not problem. It's not there. It's better. There, there's all kinds of tracks, and they're predominant near one of the outflows, which, uh, which we think is possibly the source of the leakage from the top. Some of the think is part of the leakage. Uh, the dock has become so hazardous now that we put cones out. There's, there's literally 12 inch drop on the walkway going to the dock. It's uh, it's become a hazard. Um, the dock itself, the wood is severely rotten. Some of the boards are starting to roll up on the ends. So uh, I don't know if there's a way to go after landmark for being a public nuisance and maintaining it. Honestly, well, I mean, it's obviously a thing, but I, I yeah. don't know. I don't know. I think it's, it's what is factual with landmark versus what is now just like you said, a nuisance or something. So, our responsibility, well, our engineer's responsibility is what is not being met with the contract. So, the muskrat issue, we may be able to remedy the, the, the issues caused by the muskrat, muskrats. But not necessarily the most private yes. problem themselves. So, um, but it, it's figuring out what is what we're contractually obligated, what what landmark, excuse me, let me rephrase that, what landmark is contractually obligated to fulfill, and what our obligation is to make sure that they do that, which is the bonds is essentially at this point. So, yeah, we have to see if that's a yeah. part of yeah. Right. Yeah. But yeah. if it's not so, a contract, it's not something we can address. Yeah, but I mean, it might be there. There might be some abstraction, like safety right. standards. Right. Like this. Yeah. This, this they created the problem. Now they need to remedy it. That we may fall under that. Yeah. But it, it it's a big. We would need to talk yeah. to the attorney. Yeah, well, it's a big yeah. area over, over what their responsibilities are. They may just pull it out. Yeah, there is an additional uh, problem in Lake Wokingon, the subsidence of the wall where they had their roadway. Um, if there's been significant subsidence, fences are sagging, and there's three lots in particular that have actually had a landmark come out, and I've gotten the third hand. The new landmark engineer denies any knowledge of what went on there. But they're saying that there are large rocks on the edge of the president's property, and these have subsided and settled. Some of them have been attached. And landmarks deny that they have any responsibility. But 
And I would think um, that that's so really yeah, that I'm certain sure. I mean, from an engineering standpoint, the, the, the infiltration of that water there would definitely be cost shifting. Right. Um, this is very hot. This is yeah, 15 feet above yeah. the level of the what well, it's, it's the same premise like the same when you have something like that, it's it's right. yeah, it's where they right. put the room in so they can right. access the air. Uh, it's a common question because do they still own that land that that issue is occurring on? Then you have your adjacent properties. Property law is very interesting in that respect. So if they're if they own that land that is causing the harm to the adjacent properties, that's one issue. But if, if that land has already been needed to Stonefall, then that's a, that's another issue. Okay. So it's it's a common question when it comes to property law. These are very very interesting. So yeah. 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 That that might work in your favor. Yeah. Okay, let's talk to Colin. Yeah. Never said. Oh, it's like, oh man. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the walkway to the dock. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's. Yeah. 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 Again, it, it, it's it's contractually what are they obligated to provide? If they're not contractually obligated to provide the dock, and the dock was just there as a pretty piece, then they'll just well, pull out the dock. So if you yeah. look back, original inverters, and when they right. own stone properties, right. they advertise owning and fit. Right. But an advertisement is different from. Not to mention the advertisement may not specifically say there's a dock there, but you could, you could put the boat in from the bank. So and they own the dock. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. With, with the exception of Irene, none of us here are lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, this would be a much better suited for Colin. Oh, and yeah. possibly if you have yeah. a council that the HOA interacts with, um, because that could be a uh, breach of contracts, but it's simply on they they gave they said they were going to give you something and then they didn't deliver on it. It's, what's what's in the contract versus yeah. what's in, in advertisement? I don't know if anyone's following, we've seen a butter cup thing. Uh, people are suing because the Reese's peanut butter cups in the package don't appear what, what they look like on the package or in a TV commercial, and people are suing on that. So, so it's, it, yeah, it, it, it's very, it's but it's interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So, oh, it's right. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. Slum and slum. Yes. Yeah. Um, but but again, you know, it, it could be a, a slippery slope when it comes to these issues. I think the question would be best answered through Colin. Uh, but thank you for putting up cones, and I hope that people are smart enough to time use it and just yeah. watch it. So, thank you. Yeah, thank thank you. you. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, the next is Main Street. Everybody's on Main Street. No, 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 so Stonecrop did act and put in a bond release request on the 2nd of May for $19,397.25. This is for the 74 concrete monuments, specifically for the 74 concrete yep. monuments. Um, engineer Bingham, which is our new engineer, uh, did an on-site observation on the 16th, and none were located, no reductions proof. Yeah. So uh, we found uh, a cool. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So with that said, anytime that sort of stuff comes in, whether it's this or the bond, if it doesn't meet the scrutiny of the board and the requirements, we're obviously not free. But we are legally obligated if they say that they have to put in 74 lines. We have to We have to understand it. Exactly. This falls into the documentation. Um, or do they include a plan, thought plan, showing? monuments because they have failed to update plans and that's one of the things we've asked them we want to see the updated plan based on the fact that the engineer couldn't find any of them i'm going to assume the answer is no. but uh we'll have the engineer here thursday and night we can ask him why would you put two foot concrete pins in the ground that within two years you won't be able to find because uh well, I got one of those. I'm not an engineer, but uh, I think the, the concrete pins would last more than two years. But well, I should have you got to find it. It's like the metal pins. Stuff that I throw in. It's like the metal pins. They're, they're sometimes a pain to locate, but the bottom line is if they said there's 74 of them and the other. Yeah, that part, I mean, 
be loaded. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, you use the surface where the ground would be found. Yeah. 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 But everything is, is there's a GPS coordinate tracker yeah. now, anyways. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, and the newer DSU of like the newest methods of documentation. So, okay. Yeah. That's true. Modern, modern technology. Yeah. Oh, yep. Okay, next is the CWP LD. This is the storage units located in 37 Main Street. Uh, you guys, another second? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Brian Hagen, uh, the APF request the release of escrow money to the amount of $1,187. Uh, we are waiting for the end. We have just got it yesterday. Okay, good. So I have just. No, that's fine. So, uh, was the most approved? Okay, so then Thursday night, we will approve the release of status for a month. Okay. Uh, uh, next. Uh, what? We're taking recess since you're the only one in here. Or as long as we're not voting. Okay. Uh, uh, property damage from snow clouds. Uh, we have uh, developed a form and protocol around this, and we're going to be looking to streamline the process so that people can submit damage claims. Uh, Val mailed that out on the 22nd of April. We're going to be discussing with Colin regarding those forms and any photographic requirements that would be needed from the residents around the damage, um, and then the date that they were sent into the township. Uh, we had a couple of spots, and this is unfortunately unavoidable when you have plowing. Sometimes people's grass get bumped or uh, mailbox gets flipped. Visibility is usually poor when they're plowing. So, in the, the unavoidable circumstance where this does happen, we might have a process in place that somebody can let us know that we can make it. Uh, mailboxes, we've had the experience of stone gradually located further in the street. The post office requires, yeah, and we told the residents need to move back. So, uh, it's, it's, it's an air problem, yep. And it's again, it's not really a matter of if, it's a matter of when. It's a lot of times, visibility is poor, the ability to keep the truck on the road is sometimes not the best if it's very icy. And if you have something like that there, it, it will eventually get whacked. Um, Next is the road maintenance. Uh, we are going to be updating the five year maintenance plan and uh, the cycles um, around road maintenance and uh, repair. Trying to focus as much as we can a preventative cycle of maintenance rather than a uh, restorative one. Uh, the roadmaster is out doing documentation one culverts specifically, their locations and conditions, and we should have a report which on Thursday night about that I talked about earlier well, today. Nice. Uh, next item is the pole patch. Uh, this is uh, for 8.6 tons. You can give patch potholes. Total cost was $1,255.60. Um, we actually had previously authorized uh, it was four loads of pole patch. Is this in excess of that or is this the four? I think the figure's additional. Um, and he also wanted to know if we could go ahead for the next meeting uh, to do more. Something. Yeah, we can we can certainly approve more. But I'm just curious because we don't need to ratify the the RD eight point six because I think we already approved that in the months. I mean, if we need to, we can certainly can. But I, yeah. I think it's already within the the confines. Um, well, just as soon as I go back to this one yeah. thing, um, uh, I'm going to start with Mike from SDE. He's going to help us with the uh, GIS programs. Uh, oh, good. 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 Like good. That. Good. So he's on board with that. Um. Sue was talking to me. There's a lot of culverts. And uh, so I said, to her, I said, you know what? Maybe John and I will take the truck out and we'll start talking about these things. Because I think we're going to be the ones that would say, oh, here's the GIS position rather than. Um, rather than <laughs> I mean, it would be good to get multiple opinions on yeah. the state of it. But I, I agree. Yeah. One of the things that if we get in that GIS program that I'm, I'm actually kind of excited about is being able to categorically nail things down. Well, yep. it's this one's here, this is the conditions yeah. the last work was. Yeah. Or one of the things that's in that GIS program is being able to do a, a speed heat map township with these roads that are this speed, this speed, this speed. Yeah. And being able to catalog where each and every sign is. Yeah. Also, um, I'm, I'm also curious if we can attach photos. So that would be useful be too. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, having that easily updatable interactive yep. data point would be great. I want to talk to Mike and see if there's a kind of a front end that we'd be able to present out to people. That way they can see you know, where all the culverts are, not where the roads, but the speed limits where it's signs. 
the, the more stuff that we can make transparent, the better. The more stuff that we can catalog uh, for our own internal use, the better. Yeah. So, okay. uh, Wintersville Road Culvert, we'll talk about culverts. Um, we authorized in February uh, the repair of a culvert on Wintersville Road located at 3820 Wintersville Road. Uh, the design is being finished and should be done by the Board of Supervisors meeting. We need a motion at that meeting to accept the design and advertise it for bid. Uh, for 2024 road projects, uh, Sheridan Road South, way of Pendle Park, Lebanon County. Uh, we had made a motion to approve that at last month's meeting and advertise uh, the drainage and roadway improvements. The design is nearly complete. We should have some details on that on Thursday. And then after that, it should be able to go up for advertisement. Guide rails, we made a motion at last month's meeting as well to authorize the bidding for Williams Penn Boulevard and Hickory Road. The ad was sent to Reading Eagle on Wednesday, the 25th, for publishing, and was in the 23rd and will be in the 28th papers. Uh, bids will be open on June 24th. Next is the extension of stormwater piping along Main Street, uh, along Mary Drive, excuse me, to Main Street. Uh, Engineer Bingham completed the design at last month's meeting. We have made a motion to advertise this for bid. The ad will be published on the 20th and the 24th, so both should be in the papers already. And the bids will be open on June 24th as well. Uh, tree trimming. Uh, Bruce from Arbor Max is uh, waiting for me to call and schedule an appointment, apparently. <laughs> yes. Okay, I, I didn't see it, but I, I, will, I will call him this week. Yeah. <laughs> Like, uh, yeah. I don't know else it's made, but I'll, I'll, I'll find it. I'll call this week. Which you do. Yeah. Um, yeah, I lost that in the scrolling point, but it's quite my email sometimes. But uh, I'll, I'll call them and I'll send something up. Uh, next, following a road, the two items we're going to not discuss because of potential litigation around those items. Um, after that, the equipment and repair of the big truck. There's some electrical issues, and it's going to be going over to Al Creek shortly to have. Yeah, that was just left about that back yesterday. Oh. Okay, so the truck is back. Now. Yeah, it actually scanned it into the item just so you can oh. see it. Okay. But scroll that the place. Actually, both trucks are there. Yeah, a little too fast. Um, have we been able to create a maintenance schedule for um, which? Like, you know, monthly you should be doing this, weekly you should be doing this. I'm going to work on that. Okay. Yeah, I, I think despite, despite Butch's objections, we just need to have a, a board from here. And I don't care if it's a piece of chalkboard. We have plenty of white rounds. So if you want, we can see how we can cut it up and modify it. Um, it needs to be a, a honey do list for him. And so we, we have things on a schedule. I mean, um, Everything just needs to be maintained. We need to be inspecting these things weekly and monthly. Mm -hmm. So I don't care if we put dry erase for it. How many times it? Oh my god, do you think it's like awesome? Yeah. So it seems like these things just have a little dent. So we have this like giant six foot dry erase board at twenty five dollars for my younger sister. I was like, what? But yeah, um, whatever we need to do, let's come up with a, a weekly and monthly schedule. Um, I know it'll vary a little bit between summer and winter, but we need that honey do list for him. And even the bigger things like documenting the culverts, we need essentially like the weekly report. Yeah, right? there's, there's always going to yeah. be stuff that comes up. Yeah. We just need to get, I think, in the habit built yep. of doing yep. certain things and being right. very governed and making sure, yep. like, I checked the oil this week, I checked right. the tire pressure this week, I know the backup. It shouldn't necessarily be a butch list, it should be a this is the road crew. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 Agreed. So the Truck repair for Owl Creek, thank you for scanning that, was uh, $303.16. Uh, they had to replace a turn signal and some wiring um, and a tail light on the truck. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, his fees are No, that's, that, yeah. that's just normal. Maintenance. Every year. Yeah. Something. Because our uh, stuff is falling apart. I mean, it's, yeah. even if it's not older, you don't yeah. have. Wear and tear. Yeah. And some things. Um, next is the tractor purchase. So we are looking at getting a, a small, like subcompact tractor for being able to do ball field maintenance and other things to the grounds. Um, Jensen secured a bunch of quotes. Uh, one of them was from Agri Tier. 
Uh, this included a loader with a bucket and a three point bar, which is 13,600. If we want a larger mower deck, uh, 60 inches, we can add that in the additional $2,600 for 16,200. Um, there was also a quote for a three point finished mower with a 60 inch deck, which was $3,575. That was and and the tier was willing to give us a little bit of a discount. Yeah, too. that's that's so, worth noting. And I don't think that's been factored into that quote. No, no, no it's not. Um, okay. The quote from John Deere for a subcompact utility tractor was thirteen thousand dollars fifty six uh, and sixty three cents. Uh, with the loader was seventeen thousand one hundred seventy eight dollars and thirty three cents. Uh, with an auto connect uh, feature being an additional uh, one thousand nine hundred ten dollars. For a total of nineteen thousand, um, two the uh, the aggregate tier one, which I believe was a total of six uh, thousand. Yeah, um, that one has the the quick connects already on it for the hydraulics. The the John Deere one, you have to pay like two thousand dollars extra, which I think is um, but favor of doing this, especially because we sold those two other pieces yeah, of equipment. It's, it's, it's a wash. Yeah, it's a wash. So, so again, for clarification purposes, we sold some old equipment that was just sitting around in the garage. Oh, I want to say it was about $13,000 for, for those two items. So here we are. Yeah. yeah. And I think it, it, Jesse knows about what the discount I would hear maybe. We'll, uh, we'll talk about that. Yep. I, I yeah. Yeah. Watch them before Butch try, yep. to, try to maintain the deal with yep. the size job. Your tractor is just off. Yeah. Just, just as an aside, is there any need to use the ethanol free alcohol? Uh, alcohol free, free yes. Yes, in mower. No. Um, let's please make sure that whoever is filling the gas for the mower does not use the ethanol free because it is outrageously expensive instead of training. Direction to go down the road to the turkey hill and get the gas because the others, yeah, because the, the those bills add up. And I'm really tired. I understand which um is directing whoever it is to fill the mower. Nope, so we need to make sure they're not using casters because it's we'll, expensive. We'll post it fine. Yeah, yeah. there any of our, our mowers are new enough that they are they're okay with the yeah. other, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, next, there's a updated fee schedule for the saldo around stormwater and the zoning application importance. Uh, Engineer Bank will be updating the fee schedule and be presenting that to us. Uh, after that, we have the Memorial Day parade. Uh, Tolbach and DE requested a letter of Mary and Township for the parade to enter the township. Attorney McFarland sent the letter of approval. We just need to ratify it. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the letter uh, for allowing the parade. Uh, more of a parade to enter uh, Mary Capture. Second. Okay. Uh, roll call, Peter. Aye. Mary. Aye. I'll take the next category. Okay. Please. Okay. So the next item is uh, first net, which is emergency phone services. Uh, uh, John and I participated, and Lisa was with us on May 8th to discuss the importance of using first net as emergency phone service. So this doesn't apply to you guys, it applies to all of us. Because we are part of the emergency plan, uh, with any kind of um, uh, anything that happens in the township, we're all eligible for this program. And what it is, first net is a, is a it's an AT and T service, but you get priority through your cell phones. Yeah. Um. Uh. One component of this, and I apologize, I should have pulled up a, a picture. They have these units that you could uh, purchase. They're it's just these small boxes and they function like walkie talkies. Mm -hmm. Um, do you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Talk. Talk. Yeah. Okay. So John wanted to have the township have about 60 of these, they're a dollar a piece. Um, the main unit I forgot what the cost was. I want to say in total, it would cost the township $360 a year to maintain this. So now there's the main communication device I originally guess, you know, like we could have at the office. They need to get hold of some from the road crew who send the road out those daily. Say, hey, I need you to do this, or can you please give the office a call because we know some of our don't want to use your cell phones. But if they hear a voice chatting at them, they're going to be like, hey, I need to answer the responses. The other reason you want to so many units is when there's, when there's an event, we give them out to the police department, fire department. If we even the school getting hold of the school and getting communication done, yeah. don't have your buses come in, the roof is flooded, this road is closed, et cetera, et cetera. 
So that's why he, I think he wanted 16 units for a dollar a piece. Yeah. We have to have a, and, and a subscription essentially with it because otherwise we have no piece. Yeah. And I believe that was very strong to have for free. Uh, not for yourself, uh, it's a uh, thirty nine dollar. No, 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 that was different for for the other oh, oh, oh. for the other for the walk and talk thing. Um, so I think that came to three hundred sixty dollars a year. I yeah, it was, it was it was pretty minimal. It was like, wow, are you kidding me? But the, but the difference is, first net is governments, and it gets priority communication. So in areas people that. People, general people who have communication, but they prioritize it for government. Yeah. The other part of that is, is we are eligible for those cell phone plans. Now, I can do it with my own report, so conjunctively we qualify. Otherwise, we've already, Marion Township has already met the approval. So anyone in here who wants to switch over and do so, the only thing that I that we need to ask permission from the board is, can we purchase cell phones? Because the cell phone purchases are off of co-stars, those are involved as well. Okay. So, you know, it sounds very self-serving yeah. in, in some respects, uh, but um, I don't know if it's something I should have seen from or if no. it's something on its participation. Because so, John and I definitely want the cell phones. We want to purchase an additional cell yeah. phone um, uh, for our youngest son because of um, the discount that yeah. you get. Our other son qualifies as far as military goes, so we would have a significant discount on our Cell phone usage. So. so, what I would say is for Thursday night, if you could get this and John could get this together, yep. uh, the details of the, the two halves of this push box, yep. it, and then the cell phones, because the township is able to get cell phones physically for a dollar, and then we figure out what the, the service plan is. I'm not opposed to the idea of having a, a number for. Right, it's $39 a month per month. Okay. So, we would have potentially like a, a cell phone for the room. Crew. And maybe like a, a rotating one for the office or something like well, that for that's, purpose. That's for the push to talk would be more ideal. Yeah. 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 So I, I just don't see the, the need for both. Oh, okay. It would be the push to talk, you're able to get hold of it. Yeah. And the nice thing is you could switch channels, you could have a certain channel for certain areas of communication. Yeah. Because, no, that's right. And John says Washington is he highly desires us because of emergency. Yes. Yeah. And so everyone can be handed out one of these units and everyone's talking on the same channel versus the radio system that would have yeah. to ping back to the county and then have yeah. and like every all those channels on this is its own internal channel that you could coordinate your response and we've already had a few. Yeah. So no, I, I definitely like yeah. to push the talk there. I think there might be a use case for having like one cell phone okay. at case point B have somebody going on the road for for, for plowing, we give them the cell phone to take out. Everybody has a cell phone these days, but the, the general thing about my board is if they got an accident or something or right. online, one, they're not going to be able to do that with that push the phone. Okay. They would be able to do that with the cell phone. Okay. So, and so, so that's $39 a month yeah. for that plan. So let's, let's talk about that. So okay. that that's, that's at least my thing. Yeah. Having one that's yes. there as official township use as a cell phone okay. predominantly for emergency purposes. Um, can you potentially put that in as a motion? Because mm -hmm. John and I like to go yeah. ahead and purchase cell phones. Yeah. And right? so we could have a separate motion as far as uh, the township purchase cell phone. Um, I'll have John see if we could get you so there's pictures so we could put up there so we know, we know what we're talking about the to talk yeah. and, and clarify on the, the monthly costs. Because I remember 360 for the year. So it seems like it was 29.99. Yes, it's yeah, 29.99. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, the next item on the agenda is unfortunate. Yeah. Um, it's uh, regret and un unfortunate, uh, I'll say, reluctance that I accept the resignation of David Savi at Rumble River. Yeah. So, uh, he wants to retire. He, yeah, I mean, so he's resigning. Yeah. Actually, I should, I should amend that. Yeah. He's resigning for both the road crew and the zoning area. So, we will need to. Uh, talk to Colin if there's an appointment process. I think the zoning here in board position stays open until the next election. Mm -hmm. um, some positions do, some positions do. Uh, but that is effective May the 20th of uh, this year. And can we send a thank you letter? Yeah, I was going to say, let's send a thank yeah. you card for everything. Yeah. Yeah, because he's right. been so the supervisor, there. he's been road crew, he's dedicated a lot of time to stop the family in general. Yeah. So with, with Sue's dad and yeah. stuff, yeah, I mean, just. They have really been dedicated to this community. So, uh, the next item is based on the fact that we have 
opening seeds around things, advertising for one day. Um, you want to make a motion about an hour Thursday night if we have Jeff here? We but... can have just, I think we have a pre existing nav in Folger. Yep. Um, that's on the desk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah but this piece of advertised last year. Um, and I guess it leads us to the next item for discussion. What are road crew signing duties? Um, and and, and half of that was our fault. Like we don't have an employee manual, which we need to come up with. Even if we need to piecemeal it together at this point, we need to have some specific duties listed so we can create the this is what you need to be doing weekly, this is what you need to be doing monthly, this these are the seasonal things. Um, because I think there's a lot of miscommunication and a lot of um, um, Expectations that aren't being met on both sides. Um, again, you, myself, and, and Jesse, we're all of the mindset that this is the job that needs to get done. I'm filling in those shoes, and and this is what 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 uh, the job is. We're just the person occupying that seat. A lot of people have this. I'm going to do what I want in this job, but, but that's not the way we're trying to get attention to them. I'll yeah. send this out. Okay. Jesse, very about this stuff. Excellent. Excellent. So I took. Hemlock Township and a couple other townships have started matching some stuff together. Okay. Uh, there are some sections that I, I want to tweak. tweak and move around and stuff like that, but it details like time off of work and uh, the procedure around requesting time off of work, um, policies on smoking, you know, requirements for their, their medical examinations or like the accident mm -hmm. drug tests. Use of personal oh, property, harass. But I can see because the end is Yeah. Well, I'm just not yeah, yeah. going through it. So, like, policies around yeah. accidents, way of rights, yeah. administrative yeah. procedures, you know, uh, descriptions. We have to type of job description, too. So, yes. Um, we have the pay rates already set, categories of employment. Uh, that way, if Excellent. we ever do have somebody full time, uh, dealing with grievances or arbitration, uh, disciplinary procedure. Means personnel records, use of the, the, the credit card, um, policies around retirement, pension. Um, you know, so yeah. um, it's it's there, but I'll, I'll send it out. Okay. It's, Thank you. I haven't had a lot of no, slides. So well, I'll, I'll take it back. Yeah, yeah I, I think there's just this, this expectation. Uh, in, in addition to this, because I am going over to high school on Tuesday, I will ask the guy counselor, are there any? 18 year olds that are interested in working for road crew. If you're asking for somebody with 15 years, I want to see 1850. I'm saying it's 1850 or 1850. Yeah. Uh, and it should be in the January. Oh, I think it is actually 1750. It, it should be January. Yeah. Um, we would be yeah. 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 I think he will really well, just let well, me know. Check. I don't know. But I'll have to be able to I should say, hey, listen, you, I can give you an idea of what some of the responsibilities are for road crew. They have to have a driver's license. They have to be 18. You do not require CDL for most of the things, but you would have to, let's say, report to the bills from by 9, 9 30, Monday through Friday, you take the record from the road crew. Um, and uh, you would be, you would have this from your resume, and some of it is, is fun work, and some of it is, and these are the items. Definitely yeah. as a comment. Yes, sir. Uh, comment on that as well as going to the school, mm -hmm. talk with Kelly Fox because they have a list of seniors in the Catholic Community Service. Yeah, this is different. We're not looking yeah. for service, we're not looking for volunteer. I was looking for yeah. people that are interested in having a, a, a part time job yeah. that, that would be dedicated to the help. She might have a list of seniors, right. but they would definitely not right. volunteers. Right. 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 She has a She has a race. Right. Yeah. Yeah. service is different and because they we need 18 and older. Um, we I don't think anyone else here besides myself has the necessary clearances to supervise students. And we want 18 and older because of the work uh, place laws that are in fact. Um, so we would want a somewhat. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Um, just. Oh, of course, I'm not going to go through the 
in the process, but there's two things that would not happen. Five years ago, not in the long term. No, I, I was the second. It was my first year there. What do you think? Yes. Okay, so you were there when they shut down the plant. What? You were on the board when they shut down the plants, allowing the building. Yeah. That was because Landmark, in its wisdom, decided to move the fire hydrants from the road into the Yeah. They did that out of early, and they did it without your approval. That was, that was actually, I think, more than five years ago, because that was right before I took the board acceptance away, and it was um, Peter and Franklin that did the moratorium until we Is anybody aware of a plan amendment that was offered by Landmark? Not that I'm aware of, actually. Yeah, a good lawyer will tell you that I, I ask questions that I know the answer to. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But this time around, I anticipate a longer time without fire suppression in that development. Yeah. It was 150 people then, now it's over 400. Yeah. And it should not be oh, great. allowed to operate without a plan. And John is aware of this process. You can put an interim plan in, you just have to train to that plan in that interim period of time. And John can do it. And watch it. And present you with a plan for fire suppression in the interim on the repair of that farm. That's going to be a month, six weeks. I'm getting it. So I think this, is this would be, we asked Colin on what our process is to be able to officially leverage on them to say, hey, this failed. We want a plan for the industry now and whatever you do. And, and, and it's again, yeah, I don't disagree that we should do it. So we just have to know how. It should have been done last time, but it was, it was 150 people to see. Yeah. It's a natural gas community. Yeah. And John knows what's yeah. 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 I mean, if it goes, it goes good. I'm going to let you go. Wait, wait. Yeah, I'll jump. <laughs> if I had. Yeah, again, again, my coaching or across the building. Uh, pull up a come on. The Marion Township, Berks County, Pennsylvania Ordinance number 2018-3 off of Marion Township's <laughs> website. How dated is this ordinance? Which ordinance is that? I don't know them all by number. It's a property payment ordinance. Oh, is that, is that the nuisance one about the grass and stuff? Yeah. Does it give you what year it was implemented? I want to say that was 94. So and this is the IPM. Well, it's signed by Peter Rockwell, it's Peter McCarthy and Frank. So we, we might have done an amendment or an addendum to that. Yeah, so I mean, it might not have been the whole ordinance. It might have been an addendum on that. That was pretty we, we, we want to refer to item section 302.4 weeks. Okay. Yeah, where it says oh. premises and exterior property shall be maintained free of weeds or plant growth. In excess of six inches. Is this a still current work? Yes. And I got the IPMC internet yeah. property well, maintenance. There's, well, there's two, yeah. there's two pieces of that. Yeah. So both of them match each other. There's yeah. that nuisance ordinance, which the township can directly issue citations for. Okay. And there's also the IPMC, which is a code violation of traffic, because both of them have that six inch cover okay. And all township ordinances supersede. Any bylaws of stone broken? Sure. Yeah, correct. Technically, yes. Yeah, that you guys can always layer stuff on top, but the baseline of the law, just like we can't violate state law, right? You guys can't violate township ordinance. Right. Always call into the office and say, "Hey, please have Frank Code come out take a look at this property. Please have to take a look at this, and they'll come out there to issue the notice of violation if there is one." Oh, we can do that if we'll try to get it. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I guess make sure that that ordinance was it, current. It is, yeah, it's so. not an obsolete ordinance uh, because of Marion Township showing what well, works. So, the, the zoning stuff is, is kind of 
separate from that. So the zoning is rules about what can be done with properties in terms of development and other certain restrictions on use, but ordinances themselves are usually set by the local municipality, and that's the, the very specific, very pointed about certain things. So that, that is still valid. The ordinance itself, though, and it is worth noting, when you look stuff up on the website, that's the most recent uh, amendment of that ordinance. That, that original ordinance, much like the burn ordinance, goes back quite ways, but if there's an update to it, you see a sign on your copy like 2018 in that page, which I believe um, we changed the section. I think it might have actually been about the grass um, so that it matched up with the IPMC rather than having one say it has to be this and one say it has to be this. Okay. So, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda for, on the home stretch here is the MTCA. Uh, they will be requesting reimbursement for the purchase for the playground, um, as well as advertising for the summer movies and yard sales. Um, I'm going to say we should, but we should talk about it. Yes, yes. But talk about this. I want them to bring stuff before they do. Yes, this was discussed at the yeah. last meeting. This is what has me away. So this was got at the last meeting. They were told before they do something, they need to ask us for reimburse. They need to ask us for permission if they're going to ask us for reimburse. Mm -hmm. So that has me a little bit agitated. The other thing is, even the playground equipment. You are not authorized to paint that equipment because number one, we don't know what you're painting it with. Number two, the safety of the equipment is is at stake here. Has it been properly sanded? Is the proper paint used for outdoor equipment? That means something again, that needs to be won by us first because that's a liability issue for us. So I you have to ask us before you do something. We are not for banking out. This is it needs to go before the board before after the statement. Um, I understand that they do their own fundraising and their funds are to support community events. So I'm not in favor of, of reimbursing them for this. Okay. Simply because three out of their members were at the last meeting, three of those members were sitting here when, when we said, you need to ask us first before we issue you any funds. Yes. So, so let's talk about Thursday night, okay. but I... I was of the mind that I can, I can be swayed either direction of uh, we'll approve it. And again, I need to remind them that you must bring us stuff before yeah. if you ask for permission, right. not forgiveness. Yeah. Right. And this just seems to be recurring events. Yeah. And uh, they are their own independent organization. They are not the rent board. They are not a subsidiary of Mary Township. They are their own um, not for profit organization that does their own fundraising, that has their own bank account. And, and why they keep on asking us for things that should be addressed by fundraising and community resources bothers me tremendously. Yeah, we do we do allocate a budget line, a small budget line for things with the community and with the community association. Right. And, and honestly speaking, for the playgrounds, it's, it's a good one. Um, but but were you made aware that they're being mulch? No. Neither was I. Were you guys made aware that they're going to be mulch? No one well, will find us to pick up. I got a call, I believe, or a text message from Eileen after it was delivered after saying, was delivered. hey, heads up, all got delivered. After it was delivered. Yes. More effective communication. We're all available. Everyone can come into the office. Let us know what you're going to do ahead of time before you actually do it because there are some things that you may think are okay that are not necessarily okay. Aging of the equipment is not okay. It needs to be approved by the board. It needs to go out there and inspect the equipment and make sure things comply with what national standards are. It's not okay to slap on a coat of latex paint. It needs to be a certain specific kind of a paint. This is that is not slippery, et cetera, et cetera. I understand people want to make the park pretty, but there, there's certain things that we need to do to ensure safety of the users of the park. Yeah, that's uh, by the way, yeah. the text message I got was from Eileen saying mulch is getting delivered today. Yeah, yeah, no, so, not cool. uh, not cool with there, me. there's a, a really good example of, of this sort of thing that good intention don't always translate. Right, right. I believe it was somewhere in might have actually been South America, but um, they needed a, a set of steps, and the local council was kind of hauling on it because it was going to be like 30 grand. So somebody went out and they just put it in, it cost like 500 bucks. Local council had to rip it out, and everybody was uh, right. really upset about this. But the underlying thing is, yes, it was built for 500 bucks, but it didn't have 
any of the requirements around safety. It didn't have the correct slope or dimensions. It didn't have any sort of like anti skid or grip on the stair treads. So when it's wet, it's a slipping hazard. Yep. There's a lot of stuff that you, you just don't consider necessarily. You do, you do a nice thing, but, and I'm going to take a turn of phrase here, the, the road to hell is paved in good intentions. Yep. So you might have meant the best, but it might not land the way that you were anticipating. So this is something that we just need to reinforce with the community association uh, again um, of we're, we want to work with you, we're going to work with you, we're here to work with you, right. but just bring, right. it, bring it to the office, right. bring it before the board. Right. The bottom line is the township owns the park and we have equipment. You have permission to do things only if that permission is granted by the township. And until and unless that permission is granted, you cannot do anything. You can use it, you can swing off the swings, you, you, but you cannot alter it. You you can maintain it only through permission from the township. Yeah, it's like a car. We permit, permit the car show for you. It's not something you just unilaterally do. You can't do right. those roads on your own. Right. So, so uh, Beverly, I, I see you like vibrating back there. I asked you for um, It was me who did the painting. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry that I did not. We understand it well. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry that I did not talk to the township about it. I myself, when I was at the last meeting, that my thought was is take care of what you have. Mm -hmm. But I did not think and remember of asking for permission. Mm -hmm. So that is why I'm asking, um, I'm sorry for what I did. Um, and um, what was something else I wanted to say about that? That's a okay. It's It's not to punish me, but you have to understand the liability associated with it. I know I wanted to say, I went to Ace Harbors and I talked to them. I just didn't go out and buy paint on my own because I'm not knowledgeable. So I'm going to talk to them, and they told me exactly what to get, how to get it, what to do with it. And so that's why what's needed is what I'm um, no, Thank you for being honest. Uh, we, we do appreciate it. And, and, and I wasn't trying to slap anyone's hands in particular, but we own that property, and we're the ones that are responsible for it. You have to ask permission before doing something like that. Okay, so yes, something that she brought up on Thursday morning. Yep, so if there's anything further that you want to do, we have to take a, a close look at it before because there's this huge liability associated with, with doing those things. Okay. Yeah, thank okay. you. Yeah, uh, as an aside, someone had painted what was that little, little girl thing? Yes. That's, that's there's, there's a little sick train, although it's pretty, it's, it is considered vandalist again. Some do not have permission to do that. And so uh, please, please refrain from, from doing these things unless you ask the township. If we had someone who likes to do uh, graffiti art and you can show some samples and stuff like that, down the road, I'd be more than happy to do that. You know, again, as, as we progress and move along with, with some of our plans, if we have local artists who want to contribute and, and make things prettier, I, I'm, I'm all for it, uh, but you know, that's down the road, but everything needs to permission, otherwise it's a criminal act. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's, it, there's a fine line between proceeding and all. Right, right. So, yeah. Um, can I take it? Yeah. All right. So the next one is Mike Roberts from Solid IT came to talk with us to give some of the updates with what, how we progress in the office as well as what's happening on his end of things with managing our computer system. Mm -hmm. Um, so what you explained to us are things will not support Windows 11. Yeah. And why this is important is Microsoft will not work with anything uh, but Windows 11 coming down the road. Two years well, He said, he said this for October 20. Microsoft, Microsoft has pushed that date out. Yeah. Okay. Um, for, for the record, yeah. I would take them work with Windows 11, but right. you, you got to go outside of the box. So, so what Mike has discussed with us is upgrading our current computers. Um, and he said the quote for that is the Lenovo Think Center Gen 3 desktop computer with three and estimated three and a half hours to seven times, which he quoted at $1,257. Uh, and, and aside from that is our 
laptop is aging. Yeah. Um, so he recommends that the Lenovo ThinkPad touch the notebook for three and a half hours instead of time with a three year warranty, on site maintenance, parts, and labor, optional docking season, optional accidental damage protection, which is quoted at $1,830. The other part of all this is the Microsoft licenses. And we yeah. went back and forth how many of these do we actually need? We said we need four. Yeah. So one, two, three, well, we, four. We have four G1 licenses. Which we don't use because they're not set up. Okay. So then that's that's what we need to remedy is we have the licensing. You're the person who okay. does it. Well, I actually was oh, sorry, Lisa, about this point. I tried to get into it, but yes. it's multi factors on. I, so I need to get up with Mel. The, I think she has the token for okay. it. So once I get in, because I'm going to change the email and stuff over to okay. uh, that, I went to do it. I went to it. <laughs> so, so but, you to you to talk to yeah. fine. I'll talk. I'll talk. So what is the better better cost for us? Is it going mm -hmm. to be the G1 license or is it going to be the Microsoft 365? And I'm seeing these numbers out for the public the, the, yeah. the G1 license is cost us eight bucks a month. Okay. So, um, so it's the difference of four dollars. And the only reason that you would go with that 1250 one right. is if you wanted to have uh office 365 rather than I got copy of 2019, which is a little, a little older now, but it's still perfectly workable, still gets security updates, and that was a one-time cost for us of $40. Okay. So, uh, so we need to be able to continue to work with Office 365, yeah. Yeah. and the next part of it, this was the backup um, um, yeah. issue of it. So what he recommended was the backup of five for the Office and Gmail. Uh, with infinite retention at three dollars and fifty cents each, which would be forty dollars a month. That's, and so, that's well, not bad. At all. That's not bad. At all. So, so because if we lose our emails, if we lose SF, that's a big, big problem for us. Because yeah. There's so much data in the emails themselves. Yes. Yeah. Well, so the thing with the emails, the email, the email, emails, like Comcast. yeah. Say so the email as long as you're not. I think Comcast even still has records when when you're on, and I won't get too technical. The newer the newer standard of email, the email never actually leaves the server. You just download the copy. Older email, it was actually a point to point. I can't do email. You know, emails are now that Right. Um, that's not been the case for many, many, many years now. So if the computer in the office is on fire, um, the reason I have you guys putting stuff on the server is the server has multiple layers of redundancy. Right? Beyond that, what would be ideal, we talked about this before, is if we take everything that's on the server and it's back up. Cloud that way, if the entire building right. burnt down or fell exactly, over, right. all of that's there. That's what we had discussed with them is moving forward so that we have cloud storage and to actually eliminate the server that's here at this point because it's just an extra cost for yeah. monthly to maintain yeah. it. Yeah. So, and then the other part of his was the secure type email speed introduction of $2.50 each, which is $10 a month. Uh, yes, we do. Oh, yeah, oh, yes, we do. Okay. Um, so um, if you don't, if you feel strongly about the, the G1 license versus, I'll you reach out to Mike. Yeah, I'll yeah. talk to him about the licensing. Yeah. Um, I mean, the desktops, I'll leave okay. that at your discretion with ways the office on, on that. But um, Windows 11 isn't going to be a hard requirement for support. Or right. like at least another one. I guess, I guess the caveat to that is it's, it's, it's what his company needs to do and, and to move forward. Um, we, I didn't ask him, can we purchase computers off of, um, like, uh, post or something? Like he said, they will charge us extra to go through the machines and to make sure they're on par rather than just purchasing directly through small bikes. So um, he, and, and some of this saves us a couple of dollars a month, but the goal is to get us off of our current server to the cloud yeah. within the next six months. Yeah. I think this is what, what he was uh, stating for us. Um, I feel very confident with you. Mm -hmm. He's really yeah. well with us that you know some of us are not computer literate like you are. Yeah. Um, but please reach out to him. We have his number for you then. So you can I'll talk to him too. Is there okay. you might be able to back up? I don't know if it's our G1 license or not. Yeah. Um, we might be able to do backups to one drive oh. on each one of the computers. Yeah. But I think your standard license is like a terabyte worth of storage space, but I don't know if that it's the share of one. So um, I'll I'll talk I'll That's look at it. But you can um, talk, talk the, your the, uh, the laptop I'm all for because yeah. that laptop is it's integrated. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. 
Um, the other part is switching over Microsoft Teams. Yes. And so yeah. that that's a, that's a big thing, and that's going to be again less expensive for us than this unit currently. So, so let's let's put a thought line in the sand on that. Once I talk to Mel and I can get the, the account where I can sign in and interact with it, all we have to do is advertise at least I think once, but we should probably advertise twice in favor that we're moving from soon to Teams. Um, and honestly, the best thing that we can do is you need one of to have a meeting during that transition period. Yeah. On another computer, you just open up the Zoom yeah. as well. Exactly. And put it on the screen that says go over to Teams, one Teams, exactly. and switch over to that because then that elevates 16 bucks. Yep, yep. So, so yeah, so in fact, I guess you can speak with Mike and yeah. Robert. So now we have, we have two mics now. So we call them Mike and Mike. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. I do have on the next item is the emergency management coordinator report. I do have that from John. Yeah. Um, the fire department has completed the water recipe awareness training, which is important because we have to tell the hockey in our yard here. Uh, the fire company has also scheduled a hazardous materials awareness and operations level training in July and August. Um, he transferred half of the hazardous material mitigation equipment over to the fire department. And he's going to be providing an Excel sheet to the fire department and its township on what has been transferred to the fire department for use in the upcoming classes and for use on occasional incidents. Uh, he transferred over booms, pads, and plug equipment. Um, he adds that he needs to purchase one ton of sand for the operations class. Okay. okay. Um, and, and does, does he have a quote for the? Uh, the no, no, I'm not going to write that in here. So, so, so he's working really closely with Steve Weaver to get their guys to be up, which is really, really amazing. Um, there's an engine company operations class that will be on August 3rd and 17th. There's a trench, trench rescue awareness is Friday, June 21st. Um, trench, I don't know why I'm having trouble saying that word. The trench of the rest operations is June 22nd and July 13th. You know, this is critically important to our township because of the sewer project that's going in. And I believe John had discussed this on previous, uh, at previous meetings, that our closest people that are certified in trench rescue are an hour or more away. Yeah, yeah. And so that seems a very scary thing. You, you hope and pray nothing goes wrong, that people are setting up their workspaces correctly, but these things are often horrible disasters when they do happen. So. He does need to purchase lumber, sheeting, nails, um, and other items for the class. Warrior Town Class 95 is helping with the class. He will just need to replace whatever of the above materials that are used. So he's like, he would like to use up to $1,000 of his budget for the consumable materials and to purchase lunch for the two Saturday classes for the 20 to 25 firefighters from the area of fire companies that will be attending. Okay. Yeah, so if you get us the what quotes and stuff for Thursday, we should be able to do that. So, so as far as the trench rescue class, you bought a thousand dollars. So we can put that on the uh, agenda, thousand dollars out of this budget for that specific. Put it, put it under line thirty four. Yeah. For the emergency management thing, you put a vote in there for authorizing like the the use of thousand dollars for trench uh, rescue uh, operations uh, class. Yeah. So again, like he, he's he's getting. His slide of communications is X now. Um, and just as a side, John purchased, I have a receipt, but John purchased the flag um, and the equipment. And we had my town fire company come out uh, yesterday to so put the new flag up. We should send them a thank you. Yes, yes, we could send them a thank you of part two. Um, my town fire company, it was a specific portion of it, John will give you the details. Um, don't manipulate the flag, don't let don't let what you didn't do like the flag. John did some John thing about it. So he's going to come and put it uh, properly for the board. Yeah, we have to talk about that before the meeting yeah. started. I was, no, like I'm probably not going to touch it because like, I don't know. Yeah, John, John's going to back out. I guess there's still a couple of pieces that are missing from it. I actually have the box from, from the purchase. There's something else he needed to purchase in order so that it was something down. Um, well, I guess they had a nice time to so, get into pictures and. Yeah, so it's a big deal. Again, big, big thanks to my town park for coming out and doing that for us. Absolutely. Next item is me. Uh, the only 
community happenings that I have on my radar right now is the community yard sale that's Saturday, June 1st at 7 a.m. to whenever. Uh, it's rain or shine, and uh, it's going to be technically the whole township, but most of the time it's Main Street specifically that, that shows up. Um, other than that, I don't have any additional comments. I read. No, I think I've got all my things out for the meeting. Thank you. Lisa? Um, no. No. Just the usual uh, Senate writing on the whole seat. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. And, uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Time is now 10 to be on. Awesome. We'll talk here. Hi. Hi. Have a good one, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.